Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. Do I have a good video for you today? I have a video about what's going on with cell phones and gambling and everything that's going on in prisons today. It's amazing what, what's going on. I can't even believe it. Here I am talking about cell phones. Back when I was in prison, you would be getting an escape charge. But before I get started with all this, everybody, please check me out on YouTube, uh, member programs, Patreon. Check us out on Discord. Check all the merch out and do that. And if you like what we're doing, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button. You know, I'm going to get into this video, and I think it's going to be a really good video, because it's about cell phones and what's going on and how they're getting cell phones in there. And they're making videos that go viral. They're making rap videos and cooking videos. It's amazing if you go online and you see what's really going on in prisons. And listen, I'm all for them. I don't care what goes on with those guys, to be honest. I just think it's amazing because when I was in prison, if you ended up getting caught with a cell phone, you ended up getting an escape charge, an actual escape charge. And that could carry up to five years in prison just for a cell phone. You know, I'm talking one of these. I look through stuff and they're getting these cell phones in prison. How are they getting these cell phones in prison? Obviously, a cell phone like this has video, has everything in it. You can actually suitcase this. Yes, you can suitcase this video, this little cell phone. You can do that. Obviously, you could probably do that. Some people getting a little bit better, bigger. And you also have iPhones they're being caught with. In prison, they're being caught with iPhones. So I think that is amazing. And what they're doing with these is they're actually having accounts. I know this to be fact. They actually call gambling places. They have accounts in gambling places. What they'll do is they'll actually set up an account on the cell phone, give the guy $50 or $100. And these are, these are regular, reputable sites. So they don't know what's going on. And they're not at fault. They're just getting a phone call from somebody in prison like uwager.lv. They do it. And what happens is they get an account, they get a person to come in, they're taking bets over the phone. The guys, cell phones were so rare. I was in a maximum security prison. Let me explain that to begin with. First of all, when you're in a maximum security prison, it's a little bit different. They do a lot of shakedowns. Uh, they're always there. And when you get caught with them, I said it was a escape charge. Now I know it's not an escape charge. It is a violation of prison policy but it is not an escape charge. Unless, obviously, people ask me all the time, hey, Larry, why don't you do some videos with people who are in prison? I says, here's what can happen. If the prison system knew that I was doing a video of a person contacting that person in prison, they can actually investigate Larry, and once they investigate Larry, they can come and arrest Larry, say he was doing an escape charge. He was trying to coordinate an escape. That can happen. That's why I'm leery of talking to anybody in prison, unless it's a legal way through the phone itself where you hit the number five in the federal system or even state prisons. You have to you know, let them know it's a collect call and stuff of that nature. So they're doing that. I get a kick out of this because here's what's going on. I'm looking at this fence. I'm looking at things around me and I, it reminds me a lot of prison. And how do they get them in? They get them in through drones. Literally, they'll pick a drone and have somebody fly. These drones are crazy. I had one. You can fly miles with them. They'll fly early in the morning. They'll drop drugs or the phone itself into a prison yard, and a person picks it up. When I was in prison, they actually threw tennis balls. They would open up a tennis ball. They would put dope in the tennis ball. They would tape it closed, and person would come closer enough to the fence where the guards are on the double round, they call them. They have two trucks going around every prison. And they would throw out the ball over the wall into the yard. Well, what happened then is I would get up in the morning, not me per se, but a person would get up in the morning. He would go to the yard because you could do that. He'd go get his exercise on. He knew there would be a ball out there full of dope. He would take that ball. And even if he thought he was going to get sh sh shaken down coming in, he could then suitcase that. So they would do it that way. Same as a drone, but actually a lot more sophisticated with a drone. Obviously, they come in through uh, visits. A visit a guy gets a cell phone during the visit. The girl brings it in. Obviously, she puts it somewhere. They can't find it, but they don't search women like they're going to do the inmate. Because every time an inmate goes for a prison visit, he has to strip his clothes, take everything off, and bend down, lift his nuts, bend down, spread his cheeks. And obviously, if you have something in there, they're not going to find it. 
Well, what a guy will do is actually put a little bit of uh, a Vaseline right on it around the anus of, of the, the butt. And he would actually get past the cell phone during the visit. Something of this sm size is very small. And actually, or the girl might just slide it down his pants and he can rearrange himself and actually suitcase this thing. And then he walks in, it's in him. They strip search him again and they don't know. And, they, and he comes out and they would do that and it would be a new cell phone and it would have all the uh, cellophane around it. So it'd be very easy to do. And it's done, believe it or not, quite often. Obviously, a major way cell phones go in there and at the mass amounts of them, it's money. It's be with a guard. They're coming up with two and 300 cell phones after a big shakedown. Think what I just said, two or 300 cell phones in a prison. They're literally running businesses. They're running TikTok videos. They're running YouTube pages. They're running uh, Facebook accounts. It's amazing what they're doing. Rap videos. I watched the whole rap video go viral on, on a, a cell phone. Now, what the guards are doing, and this was told to me by a guard, what they're actually doing in prison, people, is the guards would get these cell phones. They'd find them, and they'd literally sell them back to the inmates. You hear what I just said? Sell them back to the inmates. Uh, and that was told to me by a guard. So I know it to be true. Uh, obviously, they don't pay guards too much money. And when you're not paying somebody much money, corruption is going to follow. Uh, listen, most, most guards don't go to prison, don't go get in trouble even. They just have to get fired or they say that they've been threatened. There's a lot of ways they do stuff like that. And that just happens in prison. Here I am. I feel like I'm on the yard. I really do. I'm out here in the open. These fences, I mean, I remember looking through these fences like this and wishing, wishing I could be out. But it was a little bit different. There would be another fence eight feet, eight feet from this fence, and in between it would be concertina wire. They'd be all wire, so you can't jump that fence without getting ripped to shreds. People would try it. They would put a blanket over the top fence with the concertina wire, another blanket, and still get, I watched the guy come back. He, he looked like he was shredded, like he went through a, a, a meat shredder. And that's how bad they get cut, because he fell from the fence into the concertina wire. So that's pretty wild. So now think about this. We got Super Bowl coming up. Right now, the Super Bowl is in another week and a half. Two weeks, I think it's something like that. Think about this. They're going to have guys betting from prison. Hey, I take... Kansas City, if they're the, they're the winner. Hey, I, I want Kansas City. I want it for $50. And they're actually making bets. It's funny because they're doing it that way today. But when I was in prison, I was the bookie. I would actually take books of stamps and, and even street money uh, on a bet. And then the person would have to give me that street money, you know, by sending it to my people on the street. So things come into prison, whether it's dope, whether it's cell phones. These shock me because here's another thing they have to bring in. And people don't understand this. They have to bring in chargers. How do you bring in a charger? Is it just a wire or do they have the charger? I've never seen a uh, cell phone that just is a wire. They have a charger on it. Here's another problem they might have, but they're figuring ways around it. Some new cells and new prisons they make, there's no outlets in a person's cell. So how do you do that? If you notice the videos you're seeing, they're usually in county jails, they're in older facilities. A brand new facility won't have an uh, outlet in the cell. So how do you then charge your phone? Obviously, you can't just keep getting new batteries. It's a little bit difficult, more difficult than that. But again, you have a guard or you have an orderly who works at night. He's out and he's supposedly mopping the floors and he's plugging in cell phones and charging them for people. The big problem they have there, and the reason they're finding 500, 300, 200 cell phones is because there's a lot of snitches. You got the shirt right here. Three can keep a secret if two are dead. And I'll tell you what, most of the people who get caught in prison, they don't get caught on the phone like the guard comes by, who are you talking to? No, it happens because somebody in their own crew or wherever it is says, hey, they got a cell phone in that cell. Then the guards come, they might do a massive shakedown and they're going to get that phone and many others. Yes, we had hiding spots, but you got to remember something. These guards have been doing this a long time, actually longer than us. So a lot of times they know what's going on. Sometimes they're lazy. Sometimes they're 
I hate to say it, bought. But what a person would do to not get caught with their cell phone, besides uh, uh, if they were told on, they can actually suitcase this at night. This is really small, and I'm not being a smart ass. This is not a big thing to suitcase. They could suitcase this in a pl piece of plastic, and it'd be perfect cell phone. But the problem there, again, is if they thought you were doing that, they take you out and they would put you in what they call a dry cell. They actually take you, and if they thought you were suitcasing drugs, let's say, from a visiting room, they will take you the, to, to a dry cell, they call it, and they will actually, if the dry cell has nothing, it's just a bare room, totally bare, and they will make you defecate into a bucket two times, and they will come inspect that. I've seen guys take dope and try to re-eat it when it after it came out. I mean, the sick shit you hear, but that's what happens. And they will make you defecate. Obviously, you can't hide a cell phone forever, you know, in your anus. Because they'll come here and they're going to look at everything and you just can't do it. it it's pr pretty much physically impossible. So once they know or they suspect that you're doing it that way, you're going to have a hard time getting a cell phone through prison. And that's why they get caught. But... How about the brazenness? How about the balls on these people to put a video as a rapper or as a YouTube person online for so 100,000 people could see it? You don't think the warden, you don't think the SIS. SIS is the investigative services in the prison. You don't think they know that and they know, hey, look at that guy. That guy, Nick, over there. What is he? He's, he's doing a video. It's from prison. I saw a video the other day of them cooking with the fire under the stairs. Now, I've seen many of that. They put fire under the beds. They take it out and they scrape the paint off and they literally make a grill. I've seen it done with irons as well underneath a piece of metal and they could heat the iron. Here they were building fires. It's pretty easy to build a fire. I did some videos on that as well. You can actually go into my playlist and see how I made a fire in a prison cell, how I boiled water with what they call a stinger. So all of this is totally doable. It's don't you think you're gonna get caught. Here's what's really making me think, wow, these people are wild today. They don't give a fuck if they get caught. They don't care. That either tells me one or two things. The prison is so bad that, you know, the guards don't even give a shit about something like this, or the people are either lifers or long-term people, so they don't care. Or they're getting out in a minute or two and they know it's not a charge anymore. Because if you get a charge in the federal system, they can charge you for it's called introduction of contraband into a federal institution. And it is a federal crime. I used to get mad when I hear guys would take the people they love and say, hey, you know, bring dope in for me. Bring this in for me. You mean you're going to put your loved one in jeopardy of getting caught and getting a federal charge? For, your, for getting extra dope in prison or good stuff like that. Listen, what I've learned and what I was is very, very uh, creative. We are like MacGyvers. If somebody has, uh, doesn't know what MacGyver is, I want you to look that up. If you're called a MacGyver, it means you can make a, a knife out of butter uh, or you could uh, do some crazy shit. You know, we used to make ropes out of the underwear on our, our, us and there would be long, long ropes that we could hang somebody with. And we'd do that in the hole. So you have to think about it like that. So people are innovative. People are getting these cell phones in. And they're gambling. The Super Bowl. And I, I can't get it out of my head for the last few weeks that I love sports. I love gambling. I love taking a wager, going calling you wager.lv. What do I do? Hey, I, I want to bet. I'm legal. And that's legal to do. Let me tell you something. People think, oh, you can't do that. No, yes, you can. It's legal. It's not a crime to do that. It's not a crime to make a bet, period. End of story. And uh, now these guys are doing this from prison and they're going to be having Super Bowl party. I can't even imagine if I had a cell phone in prison at the time. First of all, a part of me says, you know what? At least these people are staying connected. When I got out of prison in 2007, I couldn't even, I didn't know how to work a phone. I couldn't open a phone. I went to prison in 1996. And when I went to prison, cell phones were big bricks and, and, and antennas. Now they have cell phones that I always think, how can these fat fingers touch these little buttons? Obviously, we all do it today. 
And, but you don't know that when you've never seen a phone like that. So I think that's pretty wild, people. And I wanted to show everybody how it is done. So it's by, done by drones. It is done by guards. It is done by personal suitcasing or smuggling it through the visiting room. Those are your three major ways uh, cell phones and other contraband, for that matter, are brought into prison. And it happens all the time. But if you like what we're doing, hit the subscribe button. We got a lot coming up. Make sure you hit that bell and notifications and make sure you stay tuned for our next video. We're getting real creative. Have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe, make good choices.